Today I want to talk about my Apple Extended Keyboard 2. Mainly I want to discuss why this is such a cool keyboard, why this is my daily driver, and what I love about it. When I first saw the Apple Extended Keyboard I just knew I had to have one of these. Simple but elegant styling, beautiful white keycaps. Apple has definitely made many questionable decisions over the years, but one thing's for certain, this keyboard is definitely a looker. I love the styling of this keyboard, while many people might not prefer the lower left positioning of the legends, I think it looks cool. Also the italic font that they've used. While I also prefer Helvetica, there's something to this font, just looks really nice. And they're actually not black, but a certain indigo blue. I'm not sure if that's gonna come across the camera, but it looks gorgeous. While generally the Apple Extended Keyboard 1 comes with orange and uh, Salmon Alps switches, which are just normal tactile switches, the AEK2 tends to come mainly with uh, dampened cream Alps switches. That may be also the reason why the AEK2 tends to harbor a lower price point than the AEK1. I paid right around 20 euros for this model, but I also had to purchase an adapter. I'm using the Dracware ADB2 USB adapter for this. So if you want to hook it up to a modern computer, you definitely need some kind of an adapter uh, because this keyboard uses ADB, which is this S-Video style DIN connector. And there's not only one, but two connectors on it. So you can decide which side the cable should come out of. But not only that, if you happen to have one of these weird little uh, one button mice, then you can just uh, go ahead and plug it into the keyboard, daisy chain it, so you have less wires hanging around, I guess. Although I don't know why you would want just one button, it's... yeah. So when I got the keyboard, it actually was in fairly dirty condition. Uh, the case was a bit yellowed as well, so I did some retro writing on it, and I have painstakingly opened up every single switch on the keyboard. Except for, well, okay, I didn't open three of them, but I'll explain why. Anyway, so I've cleaned up all of the switches, essentially, and not only that, but like I have mentioned, this comes with dampened switches. I've also removed the dampeners from every single switch because I can't have an Alps keyboard and not have it, the classic Alps thock sound that I love so much. It kind of just feels like you're punching through the desk, and who wouldn't want that? So anyways... Uh, this is what the keyboard sounds like originally. I've left some of the switches untouched. Uh, the F15, because why wouldn't you have 15 function keys? That is the original sound of the switches. It's, it's kind of gummy sounding. It feels nice. It's not a bad feel. It is very, very tactile, pretty crisp, but the, the bottom out feeling isn't quite the same. Also left the power switch which doesn't actually turn on the computer, but anyways. And I kind of left the caps lock alone, which is in fact a locking switch. So when you press it down, it actually sticks down, press it again, and it comes back up. But the main thing I needed is definitely to, I, I needed to, to get rid of the dampening. So that's right, I got a nice undampened cream switch keyboard. One thing I found really odd about this keyboard is how they've actually lengthened the right side of the of the keyboard, uh, the alphanumeric cluster. Uh, caps lock is actually really, really long and it has a stabilizer in it. I believe tabulator is also stabilized, which is very odd. And then if we come to the right side, you can see how the shift has become shorter. Enter key is very skinny, like a tall ass enter. And the backspace is also a bit shorter. So it's just, just one of those Apple things. They need to do things differently, I guess. One thing that's also kind of annoying is that the the positioning of the of the windows, or well, you know, in this case, the Apple key is is kind of awkward because normally here you'd get right alt, 
you did get alt, but it's it's the Windows slash Apple keys, so I sometimes accidentally use it, but I'm starting to get used to it. Control and alt being there. But hey, at least it has a normal T nav on like some of the other Apple keyboards. And here's the back of the keyboard. There's a little bit of a sticker on the back. It's not really a sticker, it's actually, I think it's laser etched into the plastic. The keyboard doesn't come with flip up feet. Instead, you get uh, like a pull out mono foot, flip up foot. You just slide this over and then a big foot comes out. It's a bit flimsy. I don't really use it, but I don't really need it either. I think the height of the keyboard is just right, and I usually don't use flip up feet anyways on keyboards. I mainly use this as my daily driver for my gaming PC. Now, sometimes it can be a bit awkward having to, say, crouch in a game with control. Which I found a bit problematic because of the the layout of the keyboard, how they've kind of stretched the left side of it a little bit, which means they've put control a bit further on the right, uh, further on the left. Sorry. So when I'm using WASD and then kind of have to reach over with my pinky to to control or kind of use some kind of a weird hand um, hand shape to do that, but but it's it's kind of a minor thing anyways. It's 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 still a very usable keyboard for gaming. It doesn't have N key rollover, but I haven't really run into any issues gaming so far. You know, not being able to press enough keys. It was all right. One more thing I'd like to mention, uh, as a true Apple fashion, they've obviously had to do something differently. So they, they put the homing bumps on D and K instead of F and J. And sometimes this actually throws me off. I thought this wouldn't be a problem because I mean, I'm a touch typist, but I don't really use the, you know, the, the industry standard claw RSI hell. I just type the, the way it feels natural. And so I, I thought the homing bumps wouldn't bother me, but actually in gaming, it does tend to mess me up a little bit sometimes because, you know, I've noticed that uh, it, it I got used to pressing D for, for going right. And then, you know, I get, I get the homing bump on it. But if I switch over to another keyboard and then it has the homing bump on F, like sometimes I want to press F for for uh, for going right because that has the homing homing bump and it just throws me off. But yeah, it's not really a big deal, honestly. It's it's all right. Uh, num five has the homing bump in the right place. Didn't put it on like seven. But anyways, I just wanted to quickly overview this keyboard. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and. I, I really love this keyboard. I love keyboards. I love retro keyboards in general. So I might make more of these videos when I just quickly glance over some of the things uh, about my keyboard collection. I've got quite a few, so I could I could show you some interesting ones, I suppose. And now let's uh, let's clickily clack on it.